What is up everybody? I'm No Lux Given here with your afternoon snap and today we're going to be taking a look at my funniest, luckiest, and altogether most random moments from this season using my Quinjet Dinosaur deck. As I was on my climb up to infinite, I ran into some pretty strange things and some fun interactions that we'll also take a look at in this video. This one starts off pretty crazy. We get to steal an Iron Man from my opponent using White Queen, so I'm gonna run that out this turn into the Dream Dimension, then also get rid of that Widow's Bite that my opponent was nice enough to give us as well. But we could potentially play another Iron Man off of our leader next turn, or not quite next turn because the Dream Dimension is going to make our leader cost one more, uh, but on the final turn, potentially, we'll be able to leader some nice things, which is when leader is obviously always really good. So turn five, we are just going to wind up throwing down Maximus into the Cosmo location and Sentinel into one of the other two locations. I think I'll throw that into Elysium after thinking about it for a little bit, try to spread out my cards. But with Sarah and Elysium, my opponent has the chance to really dump a bunch of cards out of their hand and make some pretty incredible things happen. And on turn five, they are just going to wind up playing Magic. So that's great for us because that's not really a card that I wanted to copy with Leader anyways. And now we can try to steal some of their stuff from them on this one. So let's see what they wind up playing. We're going to throw down that Leader into Elysium and my opponent winds up playing Iron Man plus Blue Marvel. I guess we get to play them first because of Leader, but they throw down an Iron Man and a Blue Marvel. Now, they're just barely losing in Elysium. They'll probably be able to take that location over, but we're really crushing it in Dream Dimension with the other Iron Man that we stole, and I think Devil Dinosaur over into Limbo should be able to seal the deal here. And I'm not going to play anything else because that's just going to shrink our Devil Dinosaur, so... I'm not going to worry about, like, just playing any more cards into the Dream Dimension. Let's just roll with this and see how this works for us. So, Devil Dinosaur adds a bunch of power to Limbo, and then my opponent plays Super Scroll. And I don't know if they planned this, they mystique copying the Super Scroll. My deck, I, I don't know what my opponent's deck is because we stole all of these cards. It's not like my opponent gave me two Iron Mans and a Blue Marvel. I stole those from my opponent and then my opponent stole them back way more effectively than we ever could imagine. So 200 power in Elysium, 76 power in Limbo as my opponent gets to copy my Iron Man my other Iron Man, my Blue Marvel, and my Devil Dinosaur for just absolute massive power. This game's a little bit cheeky. We've got a turn five leader, thanks to Moon Girl plus Quinjet, and we've got a ton of options in our hand, thanks to Moon Girl, to finish this game off. But first off, leader is going to tie the game up. Thanks to our Lizard, we're actually losing right now in Mirror Island because my opponent's probably going to be able to fill that location up. So we're actually losing there by one power. And then they also have Sunspot. So that'll allow them to grab some additional power there as well. But we're going to bunk on Muir Island this turn. And my opponent's going to be ahead there by two. So they're ahead by two in Muir Island. We're ahead by two in Lemuria. It's a tie game at this point. And I do think about just playing Devil Dinosaur. That could be strong. The trick is if we just play another leader here and then my opponent plays two cards into Lemuria, then we'll actually lose that location because we won't be able to copy both of my opponent's cards. We'll only copy the first one that they played. So first I'm thinking Devil Dinosaur, but there is a little bit of a cheekier play that you can make. Obviously leader's gonna be good as well. And when my opponent snaps, I'm thinking they might be thinking the same thing I'm thinking. This is kind of a, a pretty familiar play here with Arrow. You Arrow to drag your opponent's final play into the bar with no name. And lucky for us, my opponent scorpioned us on turn two. So their Arrow is just a little bit bigger. 
This is an interesting timing interaction that I wanted to talk about. Didn't know where else to put this clip, but I said there would be some random moments in here as well. So that kind of lets me get away with anything. We're gonna throw Maximus into the throne room and then also play a Sentinel. And that's definitely going to help us get priority lead here. And my opponent is going to reveal a rescue. And while it might look like that rescue has four power right now, it actually is shang chi -able. Because we know my opponent's gonna play a card there next turn if they want the rescue bonus. If they don't, well, then I guess I don't care. But if they play a card there to get the rescue bonus, that's actually going to happen at the very start of the turn. It's gonna get plus four from the rescue activation, and then it's immediately going to double itself again with throne room. So I am going to be able to shang chi my opponent and then take over the throne room once again with Maximus, which is then going to give me enough of a lead here that I can feel pretty confident going for leader into the final turn. So I'll skip ahead to that and we will see that my opponent plays a Doctor Doom and we're able to easily get the win. This game is all sorts of funny and lucky and random and just absolutely crazy. One of, one of the zaniest games of Marvel Snap that I've ever played. Turn one, our location is Shadowland, and turn two, our location is the hub. That gives me Scarlet Witch, which I then use to transform the hub into X-Mansion. So after turn three, we'll add a random card there, just keeping up with the random, but that's pretty good because that going into an Angela location is gonna mean that my opponent isn't able to pump up their Angela as much as they might otherwise want to. Drawing Quinjet on turn three, a little bit awkward because I do think I probably want to Cosmo here, especially with the miniaturized lab locked down. I just felt like this was gonna be nice in shutting down some of my opponent's options. They're gonna play a Mysterio and an Ant-Man, pretty straightforward stuff. And then we'll look at our random cards here. So I get Vatu and my opponent gets Black Panther. So they definitely get the lead on us in that capacity, but at the very least, I'm glad we had Cosmo to stop my opponent from getting an even bigger Black Panther, or at least uh, so you'd think. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap there because of that, and then we get to take the White Queen, and part of the reason that I'm snapping here as well is we could play Maximus into the X-Mansion, and that'll put us up to 15, though I guess we do have to watch if their Mysterio is there, they could get up to 16, uh, so that could be a little bit scary. And then Cloak is also another way to potentially pump up Angela. Now they can move the Ant-Man or the Mysterio or the Black Panther out of that location and play another card into Angela's location and, and get some power from that. Now, we steal a Serra from my opponent and the Cloak actually opens up a lot for me because now I get to move out Vatu into this location that I don't care about and then play Serra and now Serra plus Maximus will allow me to beat an illusion, or the real Mysterio, I should say, in the X-Mansion, because we'll be able to get up to 17 now versus my opponent's potential 16, and I think probable 16. And we draw Devil Dinosaur off the top of the deck. That is a really, really good draw. Um, I think about um, playing it like this, and basically I gotta figure out where I think my opponent's Mysterio is going to be. Um, but there's a much better play here. There's a few different potential plays that you could potentially come up with, but I'm just messing around looking at my various options, and I think I'm ultimately going to land on Devil Dinosaur plus Maximus. And you could go Devil Dinosaur into the Shadowland as well, and that's going to allow you to get a blowout win in that location. But what I wasn't expecting from my opponent, I mean, Colleen Wing certainly wasn't expecting that one, and definitely wasn't expecting that my opponent was actually playing a Cerebro deck. Who thought that? Who had their money on Cerebro? Um, absolutely crazy. They're playing Angela in a Cerebro deck, expecting to only get two Angela activations. But what's, what's crazy on top of all of that is Black Panther was rolled for my opponent to give them another four power card and 
That was also only possible because we Cosmoed their Black Panther. Uh, so I thought this game was just hilarious and I had to showcase it. They got us really good. I was not expecting four bro. Here's another one with a really sweet deck. I almost thought about not even showcasing this game because I didn't want to give away all of Specimen's secrets. They're playing a bunch of fun Series 4 and Series 5 cards that you might not otherwise get a chance to see, but I figured we'd take a look here. So we're going to play Armor on turn 2 into Vormir, and I've already snapped because we've got Moon Girl plus Quinjet, which is obviously pretty insane. I'm going to run out the Lizard here rather than the Sentinel, because I actually want to get cards out of my hand, so that way we'll be able to Moon Girl copy three cards and still draw a card on turn five. So that's the plan. And luckily, Juggernaut did not knock my Quinjet into Fisk Tower. That could have been absolutely terrible, uh, but still fun just to see people playing some interesting cards like Juggernaut and Spider-Man. Spider-Man, not a card that you see too often, but it is incredible here because, well, it's Avengers Compound, so we can only play into that first location on turn five, and I can't play there this turn. So I, get, I don't get to play anything. My opponent is just gonna have their way with the Avengers Compound. They could play like a Professor X or something. That would be pretty great. They would win that location. Uh, though, what they're actually going to do is a little bit more interesting. Let's see if we can jump ahead for a second. They're thinking about their potential options and eventually they are going to play Sentry, which throws a Void over into Fisk Tower and gives them a nine point lead in that first location. So now with only one turn left in the game, it should be pretty straightforward here. We've got a 17 point lead in Fisk Tower and we just need to battle for Vormir. So we should just be playing like Devil Dinosaur plus Maximus into Vormir, assuming we're gonna win the Fisk Tower and we're going to lose Avengers Compound. But like I said, or maybe I didn't say this yet, I've played against Specimen before on the ladder, so I kind of knew what they were up to and what I had to do in this scenario. We need to play Cosmo into their voided location because their deck has a lot of crazy tricks that they could potentially do. And we have priority so we can stop their on reveal abilities from them potentially like donating the void to us or doing something like that. But what they're actually doing is much crazier. We're gonna flip over our other cards first and take control of Vormir, and then we'll get a look at exactly what Specimen has got going on here. Wasp plus Valkyrie plus Titania. That's like the final turn that the deck tries to play uh, to turn the um, Void into a three power card. Hold on, let's take a look here without the victory on the screen. And then the Wasp also becomes a three power card. And then you play Titania and you win the location because of that. And you also get to win against Lizard locations as well. But definitely a very, very silly one and a very fun one. I think that brings up a pretty important point as well is the idea of information being pretty powerful in Marvel Snap. Being able to know what your opponent is going to do, either because you've played against them before or you're familiar with that style of deck, or because you take some of their endgame cards with White Queen. So that's what we're gonna look at in this one. I use White Queen to steal my opponent's Spectrum, get a pretty decent idea of what they got going on in their deck. This is a game with the Nexus in it, which uh, definitely means that there's a lot of power going to be flying around on these final turns. I'm gonna play Arrow into Hellfire Club just to take some of my opponent's cards out of the Nexus. And the other thing that that does is also shrink my opponent's Warpath because now they've got cards in all three locations. So I thought this was kind of a fun thing as well. And we're gonna move over their armor and their Captain America. And from this point, we know what my opponent's going to do. They're going to play a Spectrum into the Nexus so we can stop that with Cosmo and then we can just play like a Lizard and a Quinjet elsewhere and uh, randomly, it doesn't really matter. I think I even wind up throwing this Quinjet into Necrotia, not realizing that uh, we're not even adding power to that location. But just the Cosmo, I thought this was a cool game to showcase because uh, getting that information with the White Queen can be very powerful. Obviously, sometimes your opponent's decks that look like this can be playing Spectrum. Sometimes they're gonna be playing Destroyer. A lot of times it's both. 
and it's just a matter of which one they draw. And in this case, uh, knowing that they had the Spectrum is obviously going to let us get totally blown out when they play a Destroyer on turn six and then add 15 power to all three locations. I've talked a lot about how specific cards in this deck can be really great counters to specific strategies, like we just tried to do with Cosmo. But did you know that Maximus can also counter some very specific strategies. That's what we're gonna take a look at in this one. Not a card that I thought would be a particularly useful counter card. And to be honest, we didn't really even need it in this game. We get to play Shang-Chi and blow up my opponent's Magneto and we're already winning in Limbo. So we're kind of already doing it but I thought that this was funny enough that I wanted to look at it as well. My opponent on this final turn here is going to play a Jubilee. And we're gonna play Maximus before the Jubilee is revealed and make them draw the rest of their deck. Because Magic extended this game by a turn and we made my opponent draw two extra cards, Jubilee actually doesn't have any targets left to flip over, and I just thought that was so silly. I've never seen Maximus actually deck my opponent intentionally and counter a Jubilee on the final turn. And to wrap this video up, we're going to take a look at a game against what is probably the best deck in Marvel Snap this season. We're going to be playing up against Silver Surfer, but... We've got the best hand that this deck can have. Quinjet plus Moon Girl plus Leader. And not only that, it's Kamar Taj Leader. So we're not looking at double leader. We're potentially looking at quadruple leader this game. Now my opponent is also feeling confident in going to snap. And I will say that the Silver Surfer decks are also strong in part because they can play around leader decks uh, with having a little bit more synergy focused in their deck. So they do still have a chance to get the better of us here. They're going to throw a Brood into Fisk Tower, and then on turn four, I'm going to throw Moon Girl over into Warrior Falls to get our hand set up. And my opponent also does some nice setup stuff here. They play a Mr. Negative into Warrior Falls, and then Warrior Falls takes care of that card, and they don't have to have the negative power stick around. But this turn, I'm going to drop Leader into Kamartage. Seems sweet to me, and then we'll see where we're going from there. Leader is going to copy Sarah, which now we've got a lot of options. We've got a bunch of cards in our hand, and they all cost two or three less because we've got two Sarahs and a Quinjet, which is definitely a lot of fun to have this many options at our disposal. And we could just go leader into Kamar Taj again, though we're not going to be able to copy any cards that my opponent then plays into Kamar Taj. So that could get a little bit dicey. So what I'm going to do instead is try to keep my opponent out of Kamar Taj by making them play into Warrior Falls with Arrow and still potentially having enough power, all of our cards costing so little this game that we get to play two Maximus and a Sentinel in addition to that arrow on the final turn. So I'm feeling good about this one, but I could not have predicted just how good this was going to go for us. We're going to reveal our cards here, allow my opponent to draw a bunch of stuff. They're going to draw their whole deck. We're definitely countering any Jubilees this game as we allow my opponent to draw six cards on the final turn. And then here's where the beauty of all of this comes together. Funny, lucky, and random moments. My opponent flips over a Cosmo before flipping over the two cards that they tried to play into Kamar Taj. And then we destroy their Silver Surfer for icing on the cake from Warrior Falls. So there you go. That is going to be it for me today, and that's going to basically probably wrap up this season for Marvel Snap content. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you want to see more, I will still have some more content on this deck just because I played so much of it on my way from rank 80 up to rank 100. So I do have some stuff that I'm going to roll out at some point over the course of the next season. Then, of course, we'll also have some new cards and new locations and other fun stuff to take advantage of. But for today, that's going to be it. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'm No Lux Given. Peace.